the USA just directly showed its support for Israel and made a giant move against Hamas. As they claim in the USA, anyone who wants to eradicate Israel will be defeated. So, as of right now, the USA openly helped Israel and sent a giant warning to Hamas. With that, in a shockwave that's reverberated around the world, the death toll in Gaza has skyrocketed to an alarming 687, including 140 innocent children. And on the Israeli side, the numbers are equally harrowing, with nearly 900 lives lost. But wait, the USA claims that there is a giant third party behind the scenes that is doing horrible things. This is a complicated story, so let's explain everything. Israel has enforced a full blockade on the Gaza Strip, called up an unprecedented 300,000 reservists, and launched aerial attacks on the Hamas-led region after threats to the lives of several hostages by the group. The Israeli Defense Forces confirmed they had shifted to an aggressive stance following the recovery of territories that Hamas infiltrated during a recent assault, marking it the most lethal inside Israel since 1948. Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli Prime Minister, indicated that this operation was merely the beginning. He assured a tough response for Hamas and expressed intentions to reshape the Middle Eastern dynamics. In contrast, Hamas warned on Monday that for every unexpected airstrike causing civilian casualties, they would execute a hostage. Hamas claims to have kidnapped around 100 individuals, encompassing women, children, Israeli military personnel, and foreigners. Hamas conveyed through a statement released on Al Jazeera, for every unanticipated attack on our civilians at home, sadly, a civilian hostage from the opposing side will be executed. Since the weekend, over 1,500 casualties have been reported, including over 900 Israelis and 687 Gazans, as per sources from Israeli media and a spokesperson from the Palestinian Health Department. The Palestinian Ministry of Health in Gaza reported on Monday that the death count in Gaza has reached 687 individuals, of which 140 are children. Additionally, 3,726 people have been injured since the start of the Israeli airstrikes, with children accounting for 10% of these casualties. The ministry further alleges that Israeli forces have targeted medical transport, resulting in 11 ambulances and a health service vehicle being totally destroyed and hence made non-functional. The health department is working with international and humanitarian groups to address the shortage of medicine, medical supplies, and fuel in hospitals. The Israeli Defense Forces claim to have regained control over towns that terrorists had breached, though they caution that some could still be hiding within the country. Since Hamas's unexpected attack on Saturday, around 900 Israelis have been killed and close to 2,400 injured. Ron Klain, who was a significant figure in President Joe Biden's administration, highlighted the U.S.'s decision to dispatch a carrier strike group as a clear message to Iran about its actions in the region. This move by the U.S. is seen as a more direct remark on Iran than previous statements made after Hamas's assault on Israel. Klain emphasized that sending the Ford Carrier Group demonstrates America's support for Israel and its intent to curb Iran's ambitions. In a further demonstration of support, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin declared the movement of Navy vessels and military aircraft to the Eastern Mediterranean. This is alongside reinforcing Air Force squadrons and supplying the Israeli forces with more equipment and ammunition. However, the U.S. administration hasn't directly accused Iran of being behind the attacks, even though recent articles from the Wall Street Journal, along with statements from senior Israeli figures and some U.S. politicians, suggest a potential connection. Furthermore, people in Israel are surprised and disappointed that their military hasn't quickly regained control of areas near Gaza. Some army units have resorted to asking for supplies like drones, sleeping bags, and food on social media. While Israel boasts a formidable military capable of pushing back Hamas, their current struggle is seen by many as a failure of the nation's highly funded defense and intelligence services. Many are drawing parallels between the current situation and the war that happened 50 years ago in October 1973, when Israel was taken by surprise by attacks from Egypt and Syria. During that time, Prime Minister Golda Meir faced criticism for disregarding warnings of an imminent attack during a Jewish holiday. Similarly, Benjamin Netanyahu, the present leader, is facing accusations of negligence by numerous political adversaries. Opinions on Netanyahu remain polarized, which previously led to widespread protests. However, with the nation officially at war, internal disputes have taken a back seat. 
Those who previously avoided military duties are now eagerly reporting for service, showcasing a unified front amidst the conflict. Subscribe to the channel for the latest updates.